One new measure of progress might well be the eco-literacy of our society. Today, it is pretty low. Paul Hawkins says the average American can name a thousand commercial brands and maybe 10 plants. As big as the challenge is for one company like mine, a far, far bigger challenge remains for all of society to move towards that goal. We all have a role to play. So what about the universities and the role that they must play? Will they be part of the problem or part of the solution? Where will they stand in the years ahead with respect to the gathering threat of, of climate disruption and biological decline? Will they teach new thinking or old thinking? Will they train change agents or caretakers of a system of destruction? Technology, as taught at the university level, for sure must become part of the solution <clears throat> instead of continuing to be a major part of the problem. So will our mechanical engineers continue to learn about petroleum-dependent internal combustion engines? Or will they study fuel cells? Will our electrical engineers continue to learn about coal-powered central power generating stations? Or wind, photovoltaic, hydrogen, and biomass distributed generation? Will our ceramics engineers still learn the traditional abusive heat, beat, treat methods? Or will they study the abalone's natural nanotechnological method as it makes better ceramics, that mother of pearl nacre, than any man-made ceramic and does it out of readily abundant minerals in seawater at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Will our textile engineers still learn to make Kevlar with boiling sulfuric acid? Or will they study the spider as it makes a better, five times stronger, more resilient textile fiber out of bugs at body temperature? Will our chemistry students proudly learn to make the next deadly PCB or chlorofluorocarbon, CFC? Or will they learn green enzymatic chemistry in water? And not just the technologies, will our economic students continue to be taught that the externalities, the cost to society and the environment don't count in the economic system? And that perverse subsidies are good and somehow deserved? Or will they learn about true full cost accounting that would put the cost of a barrel of oil at fully $250 a barrel today if the cost of the war in the Middle East were included, or if the cost of future generations of global warming were charged today to the burning of that oil? Will our agriculture students continue to learn petroleum-intensive, greenhouse gas-intensive industrial cultivation of annual crops? Or will they study Wes Jackson's method at the Land Institute right here in Salinas, Kansas, for producing organic, self-rotating, pesticide-free, fertilizer-free, perennial crops, truly sustainable agriculture? Will our designers be taught that good design is when there's nothing else to add? Or good design is when there's nothing else to remove? As when Michelangelo freed the David's perfect hand from the marble that imprisoned it. Will our law students be taught that compliance in defending their clients' bad behavior is their high calling? Or will they be urged to go beyond compliance and insist that their clients come with them and embrace ethical behavior? Will our accounting students learn simply to keep score as the system collapses around them? Or will they devise ways to tell business how destructive they are? and sound the alarm all the way to the Securities and Exchange Commission. <coughs> Furthermore, will our teachers continue to be taught the present outmoded destructive system so they can pass it on and perpetuate destruction for another generation or two or three? Or will our universities wake up to their responsibility to challenge the obsolete status quo in their curricula? Will curricula be locked in the past and more of the destructive same or focused on a sustainable future? This year's fourth graders are the graduating class seniors, the gra gra graduating college seniors of the year 2020, the year that Interface is targeting zero footprint, total sustainability. What must those graduates have learned 
if they hope to work for Interface. Or other companies, and there are many, who are aiming at this same target. What must they have learned if they hope to be part of creating a sustainable society into the indefinite future, a thousand generations, 10,000 generations, indefinitely into the indefinite future, certainly not internal combustion engines and all the rest of the first industrial revolution learning. A new industrial revolution is underway. It is Rachel Carson's revolution. She gave poignant and lasting meaning to the term environmental ethics. The call is clear. Come aboard now. The time for pondering has passed. <laughs>